Hello, and welcome to this episode of whatever this will be, hypothetical audience. Um, I'm going to talk about the turn of the screw. Unfortunately, I couldn't find my copy of the book, which would be pretty useful, but I've got this to indicate that it exists. So yeah, um, that's the turn of the screw. Let's crack a lap on. The book was published in 1898, and it's based off a short story that Henry James, the author, originally told to the Archbishop of Canterbury. The main plot of the book is that there's a governess who's appointed to look after these children. She's told she's replacing these two people who weren't at their house before. Miss Jessel, a governess like herself, and Peter Quint, who was a groundskeeper. And basically, they, they're gone. And then, as she's looking after the children, the governess becomes more and more sure that she can see the ghosts of Peter Quint and Miss Jessel and that the children can also see them. And basically, I don't want to ruin it for you, but one thing happens after another, she starts to doubt herself, and she starts to doubt whether the children are good or evil, and then in the end it ends in a very shocking way, where basically one of the children dies. That is sort of a spoiler, I probably should have avoided that. The key feature of the novel is the different ways in which it can be read. When it was first published, most people read it as a straight ghost story. You know, the ghosts of these people who've done bad things to the children came back. The governess, people didn't believe her, and it's all very scary, you know, classic. In 1920, this bloke called Harold Goddard wrote an essay, which wasn't published until 1957, and he suggested that the governess was actually insane, and that puts a very different spin on everything that happens in the book. Basically, the debate since then has raged, and basically it's between people who read it as a straight ghost story, although there aren't so many of those nowadays, and people who read it as a psychological thriller, because that's kind of more interesting, I suppose. Some people consider that Henry James made a trap the governess is an unreliable narrator. Often things change based on her perceptions. For example, the way the children are described in the book varies a lot depending on how nice they've been to the governess. Similarly, quite often we see the governess recount things that she has seen, that we have also been there for as the readers, and then they're quite different when she retells them. So maybe everything she thinks is made up. And basically this is Henry James's trap. However, I don't necessarily think this is the case because there's enough doubt and the doubt is crucial. I think that Henry James was laying a trap, but the real trap is in making people try and choose one or the other. He's putting you in the same position as the governess's friend, Mrs. Grouse, and the governess herself, where you're making the decision whether the governess is mad or whether the ghosts are real. I don't think there is an answer. I think that's the point. That's what makes it terrifying. That's what makes it such a good book that you don't know. This is held up by other things in the book, I think. The book starts with a framing device, basically means like they're having a ghost story competition and it's Buck Douglas telling the story that he heard from the governess. And then it doesn't return to his frame narrative. At the end, the governess grabs Miles, who's one of the children in her care, and holds him tight, and then he dies. And then it just drops you out. You don't know why he died. You don't know you don't know whether the ghosts were real. You don't know why you haven't returned to the rest of the ghost story. One line towards the end is a great example of the ambiguity that I'm trying to talk about. Basically, the governess forces Miles, who's the young boy in the book, to speak the name of his tormentor aloud, who she sees standing before them. And he says, Peter Quint, you devil. And the thing is, in the straight supernatural reading, he's saying, Peter Quint, uh, you devil, you're here, I finally said it. In the non-supernatural reading, he's addressing the governess, who's finally forced him to mention his abuser's name and is causing him all this trouble. You devil is dressed to her. Miles's death, we don't know whether it's the ghost that kills him, or whether the governess kills him. It just happens so quickly and then the book just ends. Just ends. It just it's like the Sopranos, it cuts the black. That's why the title is so apt. I mean there's a scene earlier on where Flora, the other child, is seen screwing um, some bits of wood together, which is kind of where it comes from originally. But actually I think the title the term of screw kind of applies to where the story twists and turns around. Like it goes one way and you think it's that way, and it goes the other and you're not sure what's going on. It keeps going, it keeps going, the pressure gets tighter and tighter until everything kind of just goes crazy. I love it. I think it's a fantastic book. I mean, it's kind of gothic. It's kind of different though. Weird sexual undertones. I don't really want to go into those. That's done too much in literary criticism, especially in Victorian Gothic, if you ask me. I've not put that much stuff in. I've tried to keep it brief, but that's why I like Turn of a Screw. And I'll talk about other books in the future. If you're interested, I mean, maybe let me know what you think in the comments. Um, and yeah, I'll be doing some more videos pretty soon.